So starting out with bony palpation for the elbow joint. I'm gonna start out on the medial side doing the medial epicondyle. It's gonna be easiest putting the elbow at 90 degrees flexion. Coming in here, right here, it's gonna be the medial most bony prominence, right here. So there, the medial epicondyle. And then if I wanted to go to the medial supracondylar ridge, I would just go from here, go up superior, right on the humerus. You're gonna go through a lot of soft tissue to get there, but it should be right in here, just superior to medial epicondyle, in there. The olecranon is gonna be what's known, the main elbow. So here, bony most point here, it's known as the elbow. Then coming for the ulnar border, just coming on the ulnar side, the border of the ulnar bone itself on the underside here. Pretty easy, feeling that palpating all the way up along there, right off the olecranon coming up. The olecranon fossa, if you don't mind, just kind of turn this way, might be a little easier to see. It's going to be this space here. We can feel right in there, just superior to the olecranon right off the humerus here, the space that allows for the olecranon bony part to actually tuck in here to get full extension. So that's your olecranon fossa here. Coming around laterally, your lateral epicondyle, gonna be easily most felt again at 90. You can even pinch both sides to get both lateral and medial, right here for your lateral epicondyle. Okay, and then the lateral supracondylar ridge, same thing as the medial side, we're gonna go epicondyle and work my way up the humerus and feel this sharp kind of ridging here, which is gonna be our origin point for the uh, extensor carpi radialis longus and brachioradialis. Last part of bony palpation, the radial head. So if I'm at 90 flexion and I'm on the lateral epicondyle, I wanna move distally so I can get myself on the uh, radius. And then I'm gonna go for the next bony feeling part that feels similar to the condyle, so kind of a prominence in a way. And then I'm gonna confirm that I'm on that by passively pronating and supinating the patient, making sure I'm feeling motion under my thumb here. So that way I know I'm on the radial head itself. Okay, so right here, where this thumb is. Okay, good, there. The soft tissue palpation part, going into the ulnar nerve, coming medially, good there. So I'm gonna come right out of this ulnar groove here off the olecranon and the medial epicondyle, come into that space there. And then that's where the ulnar nerve lies. This is that commonly known as, you know, you hit here your funny bone, it gives you that zing. What you're really hitting is the ulnar nerve. So that's it right there. I can feel a little transposing there. Should be tender, so be gentle to your partner. That guy's coming down this way. So ulnar nerve there. The wrist flexor pronator muscle group originating right off this medial epicondyle. So if I found my medial epicondyle, it's good to go. And then I'm coming from here. So it's going to be this group, muscle group here, as I come all the way up into my flexors here. All right. And so the if I want to find pronator teres, it's really difficult to feel the actual palpation of the muscle because it's a little deeper. But if I come just off of the medial epicondyle here, and I get a little bit on the anterior surface, and I have the patient actively pronate, I should feel a little bit of firming right here of the proximal tendon here. So I could feel that right there. So that's gonna be the best part. You're gonna feel that guy. Next, if I wanted to go for flexi carpi radialis, have the patient make a bit of a fist, and then we'll have them flex the wrist and then radially deviate. And as they do that, I can feel it firming up in here, following it all the way down through here. And then this would be the tendon. There we go. This would be tendon for flexor carpi radialis right here. This one's gonna be palmaris longus for that guy. We should just jump in the head there, but that's your flexor carpi radialis right there with the flexed fist and the radial deviation. Okay. Palmaris longus here, so to have that, you would have the thumb and four, uh, pinky pinched together and then flex the wrist, and then that will kick that in if the person has that, but not the whole population has it. 
So there's that. And for flexor carpi ulnaris, similar to the radialis, you have them flex the fist and then ulnarly deviate as well as flex the wrist. So I can feel that all the way along here, all the way on the underside. It's pretty firm. You can feel it along the ulnar border too. So it's really nicely felt there. The um, flexor digitorum superficialis group, don't worry too much about that. Um, that one's a little tougher to feel, but those, those tendons are going to be deep to your um, flexor carpi radialis, your flexor carpi ulnaris tendon, which we'll get to that when we get to the wrist and hand, and your palmaris is going to be deep to all of those. So if you're having the patient flex the wrist with finger flexion, you'll feel it deep to those. The medial collateral ligament, that's going to span the space here over where the, where the ulnar nerve was from the epi, medial epicondyle over off to the ulna. So if you're in this space here, that's where it's going to lie. It's not distinctly palpable, but if there's something going on here, um, lesion-wise or impairment-wise, it's usually going to be pretty tender to the touch, um, separate from the ulnar nerve. Uh, don't worry about the supracondylar lymph nodes for now. The olecranon bursa. As we talked about before, that's just you know in between spaces. So you're looking at the bursa in between the olecranon and then the um, subcutaneous adipose and the cutaneous uh, the skin itself. So anything to decrease friction through this space here. Moving on to the triceps, have the patient fire. So try and extend the arm, and then now we can see we got our lateral head here coming around. Got your long head here coming on the medial side, coming up to the um, inferior port portion of the scapula. And then your medial head is gonna be uh, deep to these guys right in between here. So it's a little bit deeper to that. So you're not gonna feel that necessarily uh, through these other two big heads because it's deep to that. But long head, lateral head, right here. Okay. And then as it comes down here, we get the tricep tendon right over the olecranon fossa. And then of course the olecranon here. And then if we track right around here, this guy right here is Anconius, right here, right off of the lateral part of the olecranon. If you go ahead and bend to 90, if you don't mind that, there we go. And then we try and have him do a little bit of elbow extension. We should see that kick in right through here. Good, right there, and it's ending right there. So that would be your Anconius. Okay, okay uh, lateral aspect of the elbow. We're going to do the wrist extensors, so common origin off of the lateral epicondyle. We can have the patient actively wrist extend to get those guys to kick in a little bit. So I can automatically see here, and if I had um, them kind of ulnarly deviate, that'll give me extensor carpi ulnaris right here. You can feel that guy all the way along, right on the ulnar border. Get extensor carpi radialis as it's coming around this way. And then we're going to try and differentiate between radialis brevis and radialis longus. So we know that radialis brevis comes off of the um, lateral epicondyle. So that guy here is going to palpate. I can feel it here. You can see that kind of border come up here and stopping right here. Above that, I got another guy kicking in right here. And you can see that. Go ahead and resist me here. There we go. We can see this guy kicking a little more. So this would be brevis. This would be longus coming across to the supracondylar ridge here. So that gives us that differentiation between brevis, longus, extensor carpi, radialis. And then if I put them into a, a mid pronation or mid supination here, hammer, hammer position, have them resist that, that will kick in. That's giving me my brachial radialis here, which is also coming up to that supracondylar ridge, a little more superior than the, hold there again, sir, right there, a little more uh, superior to the longus off the supracondylar ridge so that's those two lateral collateral ligament same thing that we were dealing with on the medial side coming off of the lateral epicondyle to the olecranon spanning this space here not distinctly palpable but will be um, tender or um, impairment wise if there is something going on there uh, annular ligament good thing with that it encases the radial head so if you are on the radial head, you are in theory on the annular ligament. So right in there. So right there, the annular ligament's wrapping over this guy. You can see that muscle is not too happy there. Right through there. So annular ligament on the radial head. So two for one on that one. Cubital fossa, one of the easier ones right here. Can't beat that. It's a nice one to have. So cubital fossa there. Biceps tendon, specifically the distal biceps tendon. So that's running right here. 
and I can pinch right around it. That's this guy here. It's usually really strong. Kind of pull on that. That's a pretty tough guy there. So there's your distal biceps tendon. If it's tender with the person in extension, put them into a little bit of passive flexion. And it'll make it a little easier to get in there. Okay. Brachial artery. That's going to be on the medial side here. We're going to be right here. Let me zoom this over. So I palpate here. Try not to occlude it by pushing too hard. But I feel right here. And there's that guy. A lot of times you can even see it. You can actually see that one pumping a little bit if you look real close. It's tapping away there. Okay. Median nerve. If I'm being real nice, there's a couple spots I can get it. Really tough, but it can be felt right through here, lateral to the distal biceps tendon. And if I got underneath there, sometimes I can feel it there. But you could also kind of track it along underneath the biceps here. You can find it right through here. Sometimes it's a little tender, right? Over brachialis. Yeah, right up there. Good. So we can get that one in there. Be gentle with that. It is tender.